Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we live our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name come on and worship with me for a little while we say welcome into this place welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people so this morning we lift our hands right where you are and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Come on, take it up higher. We sing welcome into this place. We welcome you, Lord, into this broken vessel. You desire to abide. In the praises of your people so we lift up our hands come on and we lift up our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name come on go in with me oh we sing welcome into this place Hallelujah. We invite you now. We welcome you, Lord, into this broken vessel. For you desire to abide, oh, in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our as we offer up this praise unto your name. So we lift up right where you are. Come on, come on in. We lift our hands and we lift up our hearts as we offer up. Oh, we offer up our sincere praise unto your name. We lift our hands, Lord. Oh, we, we, we lift our hearts as we all for this praise unto your name. We lift our hands and we lift, oh, as we offer up. This praise unto your name. Ooh. As we offer up this praise unto your name. Early this morning, we got up to praise you. As we offer up this praise unto your high name. As we offer up this praise unto your name.
come on and offer up a praise unto his name. His name is holy. His name is worthy. There is nobody like our God. Can you testify this morning that he is wonderful? Isaiah called him counselor, the mighty God, the prince of peace, the everlasting father. He is worthy to be praised. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Faith Forward. Listen, I just had to get that worship uh, into the atmosphere uh, because we do welcome him into this place. Certainly, I thank God for all of you who have joined in for another edition of Faith Forward to those who just went in to worship with me. I'm telling you, there's something about worship that literally shifts an atmosphere. You want to change your atmosphere? Begin to start worshiping God. Begin to open up your mouth and tell God how great he is. Listen, one more time, just lift up those hands and just tell him thank you for waking you up this morning. Oh my God, he didn't have to do it, but I'm so, 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 so glad that he did. Listen, grab those Bibles. I hope that you by now have already shared the broadcast and loved the broadcast because there is something indeed that God, I'm telling you, wants to say to us, we are in a new month. I said, we are in a new month. We have declared that this is the month of possession. Oh, no, 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 no. This is the month where we go and get what it is that God has for us. Proverbs chapter three. Proverbs chapter three. If you're new to the faith family this morning, I want you to tell us who you are uh, and put in the comments where you are tuning in from Proverbs chapter three and five. This is the word of the Lord. Trust in the Lord. If you don't stay with me today, you're going to miss it. Trust in the Lord with what? With all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. I have to read it again. I have to read it again. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Verse six says, uh, in all thine ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. That is plural, thy paths. Uh, we're not just in one path. We're um, treading and traveling uh, many different paths. I want to share this morning, this, uh, this rhema word for you uh, from the subject, I'm all in. I'm all in. I would challenge you today to speak it into the atmosphere that you're all in. I'm all in. Now, um, for those of you that have been with us for the last couple of weeks, we have been declaring uh, new now. And for some reason, the Lord won't allow me to move beyond it. He keeps expanding that idea and expanding uh, that that slogan that we have. And the Lord led me to Proverbs. Now, we, we often don't preach from Proverbs because Proverbs is not a book that houses the covenants that God gave to Israel. There's not much mentioned about sin and punishment and retribution or rewards. But the book of Proverbs, ladies and gentlemen, is a book of wisdom. It is one of the books of wisdom, wisdom liter literature. Uh, with Proverbs along with Job and e Ecclesiastes are what are called uh, wisdom literature. It is practical teaching about everyday life, practical teaching about how one should live, how one should engage in uh, the life that God has given to them. Indeed, and that it is uh, a book about wisdom. Solomon, the son of David, is attributed to writing many of these proverb or these proverbial writings. However, um, history shows us that he's not the only one that writes these uh, sayings. Okay, now many people have proverbs in their cultures. We see that 
Egyptian culture was heavy during this time of the writing of the Proverbs. We have African Proverbs. All of these things are, are necessity, but I, I choose today to get my wisdom from God. Okay, I want to get my wisdom from God. So I don't have necessarily a background. God bless you, Sherry. Somebody is already getting blessed and they're sowing already. That's I'm telling you, that's how potent the word of God is. Um, so I don't have much of a background to share in terms of its continuity in verses and scripture. But what I can uh, let you know is that these writings that were written to the people of God, over thousands of years ago are still applicable to us. Okay. Because we are trying our best to live life the best way we can. We're on the path and we're doing the best we can. And many times we seek advice from other people. We go to self-help books. Uh, we go to therapists and anybody that knows me knows I'm pro therapy. I'm telling you, I am pro therapy. You need someone that you can talk to. And that's basically all they're going to do is let you talk and you're going to work out your own um, solution with guidance. But I believe that if the people of God get back into the word of God, whoo, that everything that you need, every instruction that you need, is found in the word of God. The problem with the people of God is that we rather take the easy way out and we'll, we'll scroll and we'll zoom and we'll connect with ministries and there is nothing wrong with that. But what I am challenging you as the director or as the creator of Faith Forward is to always have your word. Listen, there's a hiding place in the word of God. There's direction in the word of God. I don't care. I don't care how famous the pastor or the preacher is. You ought to always hold him or her accountable to the word of God. Tell somebody I got to get in the word for myself. I got to be in the word for myself. I know you, you're probably not near anyone, but you can put it in the comments. You can testify to each other that I got to find myself in the word of God. Thy word, O oh Lord, is a hiding place. I've hid it in my heart. Let me tell you something, and I'm going to get to the text, I promise you. I believe that we are seeing a sign of the times. What is going on in Afghanistan and in your middle um, eastern parts of the world is no coincidence. It's no coincidence that Christians are being killed and beheaded because they believe in Yahweh, because they believe in God. Don't you think that that spirit is not going to shift over? Oh my God. We've already had shootings in churches. What am I trying to say? I'm telling you that there's going to come a day. I don't know when, but there's going to come a day when you won't, it won't be legal to carry a Bible. I pray that I'm gone and dead by then. But when you can't carry a Bible, you ought to have something stored up in your heart. You ought to have a message stored up in your heart. That when the devil comes and when sickness comes and when trial and tribulation comes, that you ought to be able to pull out a word from God that will sustain you. You're not going to always have the Bible app on your phone. Your battery can die anytime. But when I've got the word of God hidden in my heart, that's something you can't take away from me. It is in the book of Proverbs where we find this, oh, this proverbial divine statement. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Listen to what the wisest man that have ever lived is telling us today. He says, notice, trust. In other words, have confidence. Have confidence. Listen to the next word. Trust in the Lord. Notice what the wisdom writer did not say. The wisdom writer did not say trust the Lord. 
Let that sink in. I told you, every word is significant. He did not say trust the Lord with all your heart. The wisdom writer is telling us to trust in the Lord. There's a difference between trusting someone and trusting in someone. There's a level to trust. The average person, we trust people. Okay? You trust you trust that when you go to work, that by the end of the month, uh, your employer is going to have your compensation. We trust that. Okay? We trust that when we get in our cars, that when we turn the ignition to the right, that that bad boy is going to crank up. We trust that because we have some level of history with that particular system or device or person. But the wisdom writer is not telling us to trust God. He's telling us to trust in God, which, which literally means I'm taking everything that I have and I'm betting on God. Y'all didn't hear what I said. What the wisdom writer is suggesting is that everything that you possess, all of your emotions, all of your problems, I'm, I'm not even going to be long today. All of your problems, all of your concerns, all of your pains, all of your hurts. I'm telling you, all of your grief, all of your trials. The wisdom writer says that in order to live a productive life, and successful life, you got to move from the place of treating God like you treat your spouse. Because we give other people the level of trust that should only be given privilege to God. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. In other words, back, back in the Bible days, if you had a horse, you know, they would fight wars with horses. They would run into the battle. They would ride this cart. They would have a chariot. Okay. And anytime, you know, having a horse and a, char a chariot was, you know, you were big stuff compared to the footmen that would run. You, you, you would most likely win a battle if you had a horse and a chariot. So some would trust in horses and some would trust in chariots. But, but the, 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 the songwriter says, we're going to put our trust in the Lord. The problem with us, we put our trust in our job. And when the job can't be God, we get mad with God. I'm talking so, I'm glad I worshiped before this because some of y'all, some of y'all not going to like me after this. We put our trust in our spouses when God never said put your trust in. You're supposed to be able to trust your significant other. And some of us, you know, they've made it so hard. It's hard to even trust them. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. But the problem is the reason why you're so frustrated and disappointed is because when you put your trust in the mortal person, when they disappoint you and when they are unable to fulfill that which should only be fulfilled by God, then you're ready to commit suicide. And I don't take that lightly. I don't say that lightly. Because suicide is a very real state of mind that probably most of us on this live have visited or danced around the notion of. Thank God, God pulled us out of that way of thinking. But what I'm telling you is the magnitude of trust that we put into other people. That is the reason why we fall so hard when they are unable to produce what only a God can produce. Jehovah Jireh 
is your provider. That's who you put your trust in. Am I helping anybody today? Tashana, help me. Linda, Arinda, am I talking good today or should I just shut this down? We can diagnose our uh, anxiety right now. The anxiety you're feeling is not because God isn't good. The anxiety that you're feeling is because your trust is in your job and in your position and in your beautiful car. And then when it breaks down on 95, you're crying and complaining. No, no, no. You got to do what the wisdom writer says. Trust in. Somebody shout in. There's a difference. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that I can trust in you. <sighs> Jesus. I'm telling you, anything or anyone that I have ever put my trust in have let me down. Let me tell you. I'm telling you. I will put my own self on the carpet. Any system or person that I have given the space that God is supposed to occupy has always fallen short of my expectations. But I'm so glad that the word of God tells me to trust in the Lord. In, 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 in. Glory to God. Glory to God. He says, listen to what the wisdom writer says. Trust in the Lord. You can't trust in people because people are one day up and one day down. People are emotionally stable today and emotionally unstable tomorrow. Stop putting so much pressure on your spouse. I'm coming to help somebody today. Stop putting so much pressure on your children and your parents. They are just people. They are not God. Stop putting so much confidence in man, in your pastors. And when they fall, you're ready to leave. No, you can't put your trust in a person. You ought to be able to trust them if you have a relationship with them. But that my in God, that that's reserved for God. Trust in, I'm moving on. Trust in the Lord. Listen, it's quantified here. It's quantified here. Trust in the Lord. What does the text say? With all thine heart. Let that sink in. Trust in the Lord. Listen to what the wisdom writer says. With all thine heart. Trust means to have confidence. It means to feel safe. Listen. In, in, in the Hebrew translation of this word trust, it means to be careless. <laughs> in other words, when I have trust in God, I can be careless. In other words, I don't have to worry about what tomorrow brings. It, exactly, Koshanya. Exactly. We learned that last year. Mark chapter 5. Seek ye first the kingdom. I can be careless. I can confide in. I can set my hope upon him because I've got history with God. Listen, the fact that you woke up this morning is evidence that you can trust in the Lord. We don't think about that. We don't think that eight hours have gone by all last night. You were unconscious. You're the most vulnerable when you are asleep. That's when the enemy comes to you. But notice God kept you alive without any external device. No ventilator. Most every device that you have that runs has to be charged by battery or charged by electricity. Isn't it something that God still wakes you up every morning and you still don't trust God? 
Your heart beat all last night and you still don't trust God. You ate that steak before you went to bed. That thing should have clogged up your heart. But God woke you up. This, is that not good enough reason to trust God with tomorrow? You've got blood that is going from one side of your hand up. And I'm no doctor. But down the other side of your body, down your abdomen, the area down to your feet, then back up again. You're telling me there is no God that I can trust in? you rather trust in your boss? Glory to God. I'm just trying to make this clear for you. You're going to trust in that boyfriend who's been dating you for 15 years before you trust God? You're going to put your trust in a job that will have your job description on the website before they even fire you and you're still upset with God. The wisdom writer says the key to a productive life is trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Now I got to talk about this because many of us boast and brag that we trust in God. You, I love what you all are saying. I'm seeing it, but I, I can't really stop and respond or I'll lose my, my, my flow. Okay. But I trust that I always go back through the comments and I try to uh, engage as much as I can um, during the week. We boast and brag that we trust God. And most of us who have been saved for quite some time have faith. You know, this is really what the essence of this text is, is about faith. Uh, now faith is the substance. Did you hear what I had said? Now faith, now faith, now faith, right now, present, current faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen for by it, the elders obtained a good report. We brag about having faith. Okay. But what the wisdom writer is saying, he puts in this text to have to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Now, your heart. He's not literally talking about the heart, but he's, there are a couple of features that when you're reading the Bible that literally in, are incorporated to mean the heart. They are the heart, the mind, the will, your will, the soul, your conscience, your feelings, your intellect. All of these things in the word of God are are collectively called the heart, okay? So what he's saying is that every part of you, what you think, how you feel, God bless you, Monique, good to see you. Uh, Martina, Gabrielle, you all keep, 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 keep engaging. Your will, your intellect, your conscience, your soul, your emotions have to be all in to God. What he's saying is there, there is no room for doubt when you're in Christ. That's, that's why Paul says when you're in Christ, you're a new creature. Old things are passed away. The Old Testament always informs the new and the new and the old. Okay. It's always collectively together. Okay. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Somebody put in the comments all. We trust him with some. But when you trust God with all your heart, there is no plan B. Trella, you hear what I'm saying? When you trust God, there is no plan B. And that's where the anxiety comes in. That's where the sleepless nights come in. That's where the depression comes in the frustration the anxiety because when you're all in you don't have anything to fall back on oh. when you're all in you don't have evidence that is going to work out when you're all in you don't you can 
can't explain what you're getting ready to do. Nobody is going to be, you can't prove what God said by telling them God said. That's where the problem comes in. How do you go to someone and tell them what God said when we've never seen God? And the truth of the matter is, if we're honest, and I say God says all the time, but if I was really, really hearing the audible voice of God, the same God's voice, who he said, let there be, and a whole universe was created. If we really, if we really take inventory, we can't, we don't hear God audibly. Our eardrums would burst. We, we, we feel connection to God. We get confirmation from God in the spirit realm. So how am I going to go and tell somebody God said something? That's what we wrestle with. Noah wrestled with this type of faith. Help me, Holy Ghost. You better share this. This is the all-in faith that Noah had. Everybody doesn't have this level of faith that I'm speaking about today, but I'm telling you through the word of God, I'm trying to push the faith for partners to not just be average, but to be extraordinary. I'm pushing you to not just live on the surface, on the shore of life, but to launch out into the deep. We have to be like Noah who started to build an ark and the world had never seen rain. That's the type of trust that we got to have to move to the next level. Glory to God. That's the type of faith. Moses that says, I might die going and talking to Pharaoh about these uh, Israelite people. But he says, I got to go do what God is. Called. That's the type of all in faith that God is looking for in you. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for this word. That's the all in faith that you, you don't have an explanation about it. You, you, you don't have a plan B and C. All you have is a word from the Lord. All you have is an unction from God. All you have is what's written in the word of God. Because really God isn't saying anything different. Well, I'm going to mess with your theology today. I heard somebody say that the, that the Bible is still being written. And I'm in my mind saying, listen, we haven't even gotten what, what was written 2,000 years ago yet. I don't know what author God would use today to write a new Bible. Because everything that we need is in the word of God. If we latch on to what God is saying, our lives will be as productive, listen, as the productive life of Noah. He says, and I'm moving. Are you all with me? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Everything that's in you, you got to be all in. God bless you, Eva. You see how this word is blessing people? And I've taught the people that when, when, when the word of God comes as a seed, you better sow it. Because that's how you know, that's how you know where it's going to spring up. That word right there was the root of me starting my business. That when it starts to spring up, you'll be able to say, you know what? On uh, September the 4th or the 5th, that's the word I planted in. He says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And check out what he says. He didn't say jump. He didn't say skip not. He didn't say uh, fall not. He says, and lean not unto thine own understanding. And I may have to close right here. The wisdom writer who is the wisest uh, Solomon, wisest man that ever lived, he says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not, right? 
lean not. What he understands is that we have a tendency to try to do both at the same time. We have a tendency to trust God or trust in God, we think, and still try to work it out on our own. And this delivered me just last night, just last night. We have a tendency to uh, trust in the, in the Lord and say we're trusting in the Lord and still try to have our own intellect to work it out. But what, what the wisdom writer says is you can't trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean to your own understanding at the same time. I know that you're guilty, Koshanya, because I am too. I am too. You got to make a choice today. I don't know why God keeps taking me to the playground. Last week, we talked about carousels and merry-go-rounds. But this week, the Lord took me back to a playground. And you know what he showed me? He showed me a seesaw. <laughs> I know me and God have this crazy relationship where I just get these imageries and, you know, but he showed me a seesaw and he said, Sharita, you know what the people of God are doing? They're trying to trust me and go higher at this. They're trying to trust me and trust themselves and trying to go higher at the same time. No, you got to have to go all in. If you really want to go higher, you, the, the higher you want to go in God, the less you got to trust yourself. You got to come down on the intellect. You got to come down on what you think. You got to come down on your will. And, the, and, and, and whenever you start trusting in your own understanding, then look, look, look what that seesaw does. Last week we were, we were going around merry-go-rounds, but this week God is saying the people of God, they're doing this balancing act here and they think that they're going higher and they think they're going somewhere, but you can't go any higher. You can't go any further if you're still trying to balance your will with the will of God. Glory to God. You, 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 you can't try to figure it out and then want God to work it out. You, you're going to have to go either higher or lower. I'm choosing today. I'm getting ready to close this message because I, I feel myself. I'm telling you, I run a lot. I do run when I get off this line. I came to tell somebody let it let it go let your will go let your understanding go let your plan be go listen let how you think it's supposed to let it go and let God rise in you and and when you go low hallelujah then God will eventually take you higher you can't go higher until you go lower who am I talking to today? Woo! You can't trust in the Lord with all your heart and still lean. You're, you're going to look like a crazy person trying to lean in the direction of God and lean in the direction of Trella and lean in the, the direction of Amanda and lean in the direction of Sherry. God says to you today, relinquish. Don't try to figure it out. It's hard. I know. Don't try to figure it out. Let it go. Let God do it. Yes, you may can explain it. It's, it's going to be tough. But, you know, I, I'm of the persuasion now. I, don't, I, I, I ain't going to tell you no more than what I know. If I be embarrassed, it's okay. You, if you're not paying my bills, it's okay. If you're not rubbing my feet at night, it's okay. Are you listening to me? We got to get to the place where we don't care what people think, ladies and gentlemen. It's not about what you think when God is speaking to me, when God is showing me and pulling me in another direction. Glory to God. I, I, I want you to put in the comments. I'm being delivered from the people's opinion. Put it in the comments. You better write it. Because you're letting the devil know today you can't keep holding stuff over my head. You can't keep holding me to, to expectations that God has not given to me. You better put it. Deliver me from people's opinions. You can't take someone's opinion to the bank and cash it. You can't pay my car note. Thank God I don't have one. You, you can't pay a car note with an opinion. This is nothing deep. This is this is really nothing deep. This is just really just hearing the Lord speak through his word. Lean not 
unto thine own understanding. You better stop listening to people that, that, that are not in tune with what God is doing for you and in you. Stop leaning on the, on the intellect of other people. Stop leaning on the intellect of, of other people. I'm trying to make sure that I don't forget anything. Did you hear what I said? You're getting advice from people that have never been where you've been and they're not going where you're going. You better get connected to a real prophet in this season. And I'm not talking about these prophet prophets. I'm talking about someone who hears from the word of God. God isn't saying anything new. The same message he gave to Israel is the same message God has given to America. Humble yourself. Repent. Same message. There's nothing new under the sun. God is not saying anything different than what he's already in, in, He's reiterating it. He's, he's, he's raising up new voices to say the same thing. That's why Paul says, if there comes to you, anybody that's preaching anything different than what I have told you, you better get away from them. From them. I'm sorry. That's my, my Eastern North Carolina coming out. Lean not to not own understanding. Don't uh, what, what the spirit of the Lord told me to tell you. Don't, uh, micromanage God. Don't micromanage God. Don't micromanage God. In other words, you know that a micromanager is a boss or manager who gives excessive supervision to it, to his or her employees standing over you. Listen, don't micromanage God. If you trust God to do it, pray about it and go. You don't have to keep praying about it. He heard you the first time. Yes, we need to intercede. Yes, we need to be um, effectual and fervent in our prayers, but don't micromanage God as if he's unable to do it. Because what I found out about it, if it works out is God. And if it doesn't work out is God. He says uh, that somebody better tweet that. And I'm closing on this in all thy ways. There's the all again in all thy ways, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Oh, worship him. That's why we start off this morning with that worship song. Welcome into this place. We don't want to do anything. This is not by our own goodness that we're alive. God, we need you. I'm not going to acknowledge my degrees. Yes, I have them. Yes, I have credentials, but that doesn't make me who I am. It's God. Your connections don't make you who you are. I look at people all the time. Who, who are always, you know, there's somebody because they're connected to somebody. And I want to, I want to break that too. I hope there's nobody here on, on, on the faith fam that, you know, deem yourself important because you're connected to somebody. No, you're important because God created you. If your only success is as a connection to other people, you need to, you need to find why God created you. You're not significant and important because you help somebody else or you're connected to somebody else. No, you're important because God, before he formed you in, in the belly, he knew you and he ordained you. He called you. He knew your paths. He says, when you acknowledge him, basically acknowledge means to worship him. Acknowledge means to praise him. Acknowledge means every time you're having a conversation with somebody, don't tell them it's because of your job and your degree. No, it's because of the goodness of the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. No, no, no. Yes, you came from a wealthy family. Yes, your grandmother had money, but it's not. That's not the reason why you're alive today. You can't pay for the grace that's upon your life. You can't pay for the favor that God has allowed you to walk in. You can't pay for the anointing. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's because of Jesus that I still, it's because of Jesus that I'm saved. It's because of Jesus that if I were to die tonight, 
I'll spend eternity in heaven. Why? Because I'm acknowledging that it's only by the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody, I'm done. Somebody needs to lift up your hands and acknowledge him right now. I know, I know it's tough. I know your back is up against the wall. But as you worship, God is going to direct you what to do. He says, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. As you worship, he's going to direct you. As you praise, he's going to lead you to the right people. As you begin to, to, to tell God, Lord, you are my provider. Oh, we're going to close with worship. Lord, you are my sustainer. I thank God for my spouse. I thank God for my job. But God, I recognize that you are the author and the fit. Don't you know that does something to God when you start boasting in him? David told him, David told us, I will make my boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. I'm boasting in God. I'm boasting that I have good self-esteem, not because of me, but because of Christ in me. I can't be depressed because God is too big in me. I can't have low self-esteem because God is too big in me. Are you listening? I can't commit suicide because God is too big in me. I can't give up because God is too big in me. I can't die with COVID and cancer because I've got a healer on the inside of me. When you acknowledge him in all of your ways, are you listening? He will tell you where to go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, that you have shown yourself to be trustworthy. This is not something new. Trusting you isn't something new. I've been trusting you all my life and he's never failed me. Yes, people have failed. Yes, churches have failed me. Yes, uh, uh, friends have failed you. And I'm talking, when I say me, I'm talking about all of us. Yes, family will fail you. Yes, leadership will fail you. Yes, job will fail you. But all of my life, I've never known him to fail. I'm young. I've been young. And now I'm older, if I can revise that a little bit, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. That's what David said, nor his seed beg for bread. That's the type of trust that God is requiring of faith forward. I can't, I can't speak for any other organization or church or partnership, but God wants us. And I say us because at this point now we are family. We're organization. Those of you who have not missed some, we've been up here like 80 weeks and some of you have never missed one. God wants us to stand out. We're not operating in, in, in faith in ourselves. It's all about God. It's all about Christ. It's all about moving forward in Christ. Not in of ourselves. I'm so glad today that uh, the Lord used Solomon in just one or two verses uh, to encourage us that this next move that you make, yes, Gloria, bigger and better. This next move that you make, what you're getting ready to do, you don't need anybody else's approval. All you need is to trust in God. You don't need anybody else's approval. You don't have to run it by your sis. Uh, unless you feel, because the Bible says that there is, it's wise in a multitude of counsel. Okay, there's, there's. Um, I, I want to quote it well, but basically what it's saying is, and it's even in the Proverbs, there's um, strength in a multitude of counsel. So we don't just make decisions, okay? I'm not telling you, you got to make sure you really hear from God. You got to make sure that this thing, I got to bring balance, okay? You got to really make sure that this is what God has through a series of confirmations, through a series of dreams, through a series of visions that you've seen yourself. And you can say, God, I don't know how you're going to do it. Can't explain it, but I know it's you. This next move that you're going to make, you got to go all in. Ah, oh, did you hear what I said? Max bet. That's what we do when we go to Vegas. Oh, I'm not even going to lie to you. When I go to Vegas, and I used, to, I used to go every year, 
I didn't do any heavy stuff. You know, you put a quarter in the slot machine and I know what I'm going to spend and what I'm not. It's just, you know, just innocent stuff. And 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 there's a a um a little button that says max bet. And that's the maximum you can put on that particular um bet or whatever. But basically say everything that you put in here, you're going to win it all. If you put it all. And that's what I'm saying to you. Put it all on God. Put it, put it all. Max bet. I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. Listen, I want you to know today that God is um, he's going to show himself strong and mighty in your life. That's it. I want to close in prayer. And uh, while you're praying, I want you to um, ask God what it is that you want to sow today. What seed that you want to put all in. And when you put it in the uh, comment section of your seed, I want you to put in all in month of possession. This is very important. All in month of of possession. Again, all in month of possession. Father, I thank you today for your word. I thank you for your people that they're not just hearers of the word, but they are doers of the word. God, I thank you today that even through the wisdom of Solomon, we can find ourselves in your word. I thank you that you are trustworthy. I thank you, oh God, that you are so trustworthy that you sent your only begotten son to die for our sins, knowing, oh God, that one day we will see the light and accept Jesus as our personal savior. So father, I pray for the one today that is struggling in their trust and their trust in you. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would visit them at night, visit them in their sleep, visit them in their dreams. God, show them, send a stranger to confirm your word to them, that they will put all of their hope and all their trust in you, the author and the finisher of my in their faith. We thank you that this month we declare it and we decree it, God, that this shall be a month that we possess everything that we have committed to you in our trust. This is our prayer and our supplication in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, I want you to go through the rest of this month knowing that God has your best interest at heart. Why don't you greet somebody? Um, even after this show to let them know, uh, cause we can't touch our neighbors, but you can find a friend that you've met and just let them know. I'm believing God for your next season. I love you. I love you. And I'll see you on next week.